Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stephen Draws video. I'm just gonna prop up the camera uh, and then we can start drawing. It's been a while since I've uh, did one of these and I'm gonna wait till we get about 40 or 50 people on and then we can start. Hello. All right, so I'm gonna move this lighting over then we can start. Hello, hi everyone. I uh, painted a rubber chicken right here. Thought I'd uh, take him with us on this interesting video today. All right. Hello, hi everyone. All right. So, if if you want, um. This video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to draw an animal of your choosing. So that should be interesting. And yeah, last live feed didn't go as planned. Um, it happened. I had to delete it because it went so all over the place. Finally, I'm doing another video. It's nice to be back. So yeah. All right. Oh, hi. Hi, Granny Lori. It's good to see you. Um, okay, so I just finished a couple commissions. That's what I was also doing. I finished two commissions, and I've just got commissioned to do a bunch of leather jackets, so maybe I'll make a video about that. Also, I'm going to point this over here just a second. I'm starting a painting. You can't really tell what it is yet. I also knocked a bunch of boxes over over there that I have to pick up. Yeah, it's a bunch of board games that fell over. But I didn't do it. I didn't pick it up yet. Because I had to do a live feed. Alright, so. 25 people are on? Alright. Cool. So that means we can start. And if you have a pencil with you. Oh, hi Zenobia. Yeah, if you guys have a pencil on you or a piece of paper near you, I'd suggest grabbing it if you want to learn. Of course, you can just uh, do this at another time because you can just skip back. So yeah. Any animal that you guys want, I can teach you how to draw it. So what do you guys think? What should we draw? What, should, what do you want to learn how to draw? And it's not going to be overcomplicated. A wombat. No, I don't think I can draw a wombat without a reference. How about... um? I'm pretty good. Hold on. I'll actually... A cow. All right. Chicken, frog. Hi. Hi, everyone. Horse? That's a good idea. I, I might do a horse. Actually, um, all right, let's see. I'm going to take out my little art portfolio of fox. Let's see. I'm not going to do anything super complicated yet because I don't want to be rushing anything. Also, it doesn't have to be an animal if you guys don't want. It can be anything else too. I'm going to just, just a second. I will be right back. If you guys want to learn how to draw Chewy, I can do that pretty well, almost off the top of my head. I can also do a bunny right now. I don't have a reference with me, so I can do a bunny, a shark, anything like that. But not necessarily a wombat. Let's see. Oh, a T-Rex. That's a cool idea. All right. What do you guys think? Hello. Hi, everyone. Just got some new... Let's see. A slug. Well, I mean, sure. All right. Let's see. Hello, hands. Commission. Your commission is just about done. I have a few that I'm just going to color. Finish coloring. All right. So the only problem I had with the slug, not that it's a bad idea. It's just because you have to figure out how to do reflections. I might. Oh, okay. Oh, don't worry. All right. Actually... Yeah, let's see. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna start off by just showing you guys how to draw fur. How about that? And then we can move on to an animal. So I've got a lot of dog and a lot of cat. And I've gotten a couple slugs. Those are more difficult to draw. I know I can do it, but it's difficult to figure out all the... Excuse me, my voice, uh, a little <laughs> furry slug. 
Um, is it not just a caterpillar? Basically. All right. I'm going to show you guys how to draw fur first to that. And then, oh, an elephant. That's a cool idea. What do you guys think? That would be pretty cool to draw. Oh, I have faith in you guys. I just don't have a reference with me. Also, I just don't want to make it too difficult because I don't want to make anyone more frustrated than they have to be. What do you guys think? What does the fox say? Um, it's like a a reedy d d d d d d d. That's from like twenty twelve. Yeah, my voice did get uh, a lot deeper. Let's see. All right. An elephant? You guys think about the elephant. Oh, a bee. Okay, there's a lot of different options. I'm just going to start with um, with fur then. I'll start with fur. And so you want to take your... I'm going to move this lighting a bit closer so it doesn't... Uh, shad not a lot of shadow. Oh, yeah, Hans, I saw your shepherd's pie video. Actually, we we're going to try it tonight, I think. But we had a kind of a wrap thing going on. It looked good, though. All right, I'm going to start. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay, I'm going to start with... Um, how about this? I'll teach you guys how to do long hair. So if you grab your pencil, it's long, short hair, stuff like that. I'll start with the long hair, though. So if you grab your pencil, have it in your hand right now, just hold it like however you're comfortable. And I actually rest my palm of my hand here, but sometimes it smudges. So if you want to avoid getting smudges on it, you just put a, another piece of paper or a piece of wax paper there. Smudges it way less. So I'm going to zoom in here. There we go. Now, if you want to do like long hair, so that's what I'm going to start showing you guys now. And lower the lighting a bit. There we go. If you want to learn how to do long hair, this is how. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to lower the light. I just need to fix the lighting. So, bear with me. Kind of annoying, I know. Sorry about that, guys. There, that's much, much better. I just want to make sure there's no shadows blocking it. So, just get your pencil ready, however you hold your pencils, and just kind of... And whichever way the hair is going, so for if it's long hair, this is just a strand of hair, like straight line, like that, right? And then just put, like, just kind of randomly put a bunch of straight lines. Kind of like that. And make it point into, like, a tip. Kind of like that. Well, yeah, you see how I'm doing that? See the shape that I have right now? It's pretty easy. Just a bunch of random strands of hair. And you just keep repeating that like lightly. So now that you have like the basic shape, as soon as you have this, you know, that's basically what you need to know for a strand of hair. And um, yeah, so then when you want what you want to do is uh you want to pick out some hairs that are like the darkest and they go in uh deeper than the other hairs so like more shadows you want to pick out where the shadows are going to be and kind of go over some of the hairs and once you kind of figured out where the shadows are so i just put like a, a couple lines where they're the darkest like that like that <laughs> And, um, sorry, laughing to myself. Um, I'll tell you guys after just a sec. You just kind of keep going over lightly with your pencil. And in the spots where the shadows are, you kind of connect by going over it more than the others. Now that you have kind of like that, that kind of shape, that's what you want. And you just kind of... Make more little uh, random hairs. So like this. This is just one little thing of hair. Hello, Mark. So you kind of have this thing going on. And you're probably wondering, well, 
Or you're probably thinking to yourself, why does it look like that? That isn't, you know, necessarily what hair looks like. And then if you have like a normal pencil, these things, they smudge really easy. Yep. Long curly hair, I can teach you that too. It's actually very similar to this. So I'm going to stay with this first. That's kind of how I did the, oops, tripod does not want to face up. So this, that's kind of what I did for the parrot's hair up here. If you look closely, you can actually see little triangles. And what I did was triangles all the way like there. And uh, that's basically the a basic step. Now what you want to do is make another little hair spike. Hi, Matthew. Yeah, another little hair spike coming up here. And since you've probably already figured out like which way the hair is going to be brushed or like which way the hair is facing. The hair is facing this way, by the way. So the spikes just kind of curve up. You make a little one here. Kind of like that. So you kind of see the two hair spikes. Yeah, last time, um, I'm going to get off top. Excuse me. I'm going to get a little bit off topic so you guys can catch up if you aren't already about last live feed. And the reason I had to delete it um, was because the dogs in the background, they wouldn't stop barking. And after that, they like, as soon as I left the live feed, they uh, stopped barking. So I don't know if it was like a, like a, evil little dog plot. Whoops. Well, that's weird. My desk fell. Not fell, but like, I guess it was, um, because there's a ratchet that controls how high up it is, like how much of an angle it's on, I guess the ratchet came loose. Hello, Sonic Phil. All right, so if you guys have any trouble, just let me know. I'll stop and wait for you guys to catch up. But yeah, all right. And so you see how you have the two hair spikes. That's where we were before I got a little bit off topic. And what you want to do first, and in this area, take your eraser and just do kind of random little quick swipes upward. And you see how much softer that hair looks. And a uh, process of like, oh, what's it called? I haven't been in school for a while. <laughs> Jeez. Just trial and error, that's what I was thinking of saying. Just kind of redraw it, and then add little eraser marks. Like that. Looks a lot softer, right? Then you can also draw a little... And by the way, the little motions that I'm making... That shape. Oh yeah, thank you. I have a drafting brush. You guys just, it doesn't matter about that. It just, I'll pick that up in a second. It just, as long as you have something to brush away, the like just another piece of paper works too. I have a drafting brush though that was sent by, uh, to me by a very, very kind subscriber. Thank you very much. And yeah, it's super useful. So if you want to get one, they help get rid of the eraser dust without smudging your drawing. So now that you have something similar to this, you have your other hair spike to work on too. But it's easier because you already kind of know. It's kind of like little hair spikes. The hair is like little strands, kind of like grass almost. Now you get your darker hair. And especially where the parts are like separated, like the little triangles, you know, those are darker. Kind of like that. And you just shade it in with your finger, just smudging it. Works perfect. I'm kidding, there's no such thing as perfect. It works how I want it to. Then you can just come in and wherever you think it would be a highlight, like where the light would reflect off of quick swipes 
with your eraser. So you can kind of see that looks like hair. And um, if you want it to be like more thin hair, like this would be probably like hair on a bear or something because their hair is very separate from each other. If you want it to be very soft hair, now stop me if I'm going too fast. So I'm gonna stop for like a little bit, let you guys catch up. And uh, by the way, merch is coming out soon. This is the design. Oh, and then there's one like with a heart and a pencil and it says like, oh, let's see. Do you have a, oh, thank you very much, Matthew. Well, I'm gonna scroll back up to the comment. Do you have similar technique for drawing fabric? Like showing the difference between, the differences between silk and wool. Actually, for silk, like it's pretty simple, but when it's close up, you just kind of, um, this is just a on the side kind of thing. You don't have to draw this if you don't want, but I just kind of go really lots and lots of lines and then I smudge it so it looks super smooth. Then I just add tiny little marks like this. And wherever there's a shadow, I smudge it some more just in that spot where there's a shadow. And then on the part where there's a highlight, I just erase it a little bit. And for wool, like that, if you continued this onto like the sleeve of a coat or something, you know, you kind of understand how that would go. <clears throat> Now I'm going to erase this. Oh, sounds like my dad's home. I'll say hi to him in a bit. Let's see. So I'm going to teach you guys how to draw short hair. And for shorter hair, it's a lot easier just because there's less that you have to worry about. So if you just draw like a little square where you want the hair to be, just like in that area, you don't have to, of course, like that's not, oops, a uh, super necessary thing you have to do, but it does help me so I can focus better. Let's see. And for like short hair, you just have to establish where the light is. And excuse me, I had, I had cabbage and I did not, uh, I'm burping. I'm not doing anything else. I'm sorry. Oh, geez. That's really annoying. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah. You start from the bottom, just at the bottom of the square. And, like, establish where the light is. So, I'll draw a little sun up here so I remember the light is coming down. The light is coming downward. And let's say it's on, like, a... You have to also understand, like, the way that the body is curved. So... The body's like, or wherever the fur is, it's on a curved surface. So make the square curved like this. Just so you also remember that it's on a curved area. And this is the sun. Give little sun beams. And yeah. So what you want to do is um, kind of draw lines like this. This is how I do it, of course. You don't have to do it like this if you don't want to. And since the light is coming in from here, it's going to be darker over here. This is probably where the shadow would be in this area. And um, so lighter over here, darker over here. So I'm going to start in the darker area because that's what I'm most comfortable with. And you'll see the strokes I'm making with the, with the thing. Kind of like if you see, it's like kind of like little squares almost of hair. You just keep layering them on top. Because hair grows in layers. Like this. Then you can just, yeah, you kind of see where I'm going with this, right? And you can erase it, make it look more. Random like highlights. That's that's what the highlighted fur is gonna look like. Just kind of looks like a bunch of dots, but that's not permanent. It's not gonna be like that.
for too long. So if you just, in the shadows, keep repeating that step, just random. It's like I'm tapping it really quick with a pencil. You kind of see when I layer it on top of each other and make it darker where I layered it. Like add little shadows. See what I did there? Let's see. Oh, is my mom on? I'm gonna say yes. Oh yeah, I was, um... I'm actually going to do something like that with my family in a, in a portrait. It's in a little frame that we haven't really been using, so we thought it'd be a good idea to do something like that, like a family portrait. So you just kinda, you see how I'm layering it? It's just kinda random, but it's like I'm tapping the paper with the pencil really quick, like that. And that's for the shadows on the fur. And then if you wanna go in more detail, of course, you gotta really get in there. Just be really careful where your hairs are going and kind of make it a little bit random if you want to. How Sonic Phil, you actually I didn't know you could do that. There's a little dabbing thing that you could. <laughs> That's kind of funny. All right. So now that you have this, um you can come in from the top and just light. Light what I did down here. Uh, gently on the paper and you don't even have to worry about the layering too much just make like gentle little dots and make it like you just kind of overlap some of them you know like that and since the light is the strongest here there's even spots where the fur just doesn't even have that much of a shadow and the one it gets more downward you can add more detail in the in the way it's layered. Of course, it's not not as close together, by the way, as it is down here. And eventually, if you just kind of fill it in darker, and then obviously lighter up here, this is the lightest spot, and then this way gets darker as well. So darker, lighter. Or just which, whichever way that it's curved, whichever way that it's facing, I got a fingerprint on it. Yeah, so that's basically all you really need to know for short hair. I also, um, what I would also recommend, if you want your hair to look oops, really realistic, I'm just going to show you this really quickly. But highlights. Highlights are super, super important. So like when I'm doing a, uh, the hair's gonna be green for now. But when I'm doing like a, say a drawing with colored fur, start with the base color, move on to the medium color. And remember like hair flows kinda wherever it wants to. And then on the darkest color, it's going to be like this. <laughs> Obviously, hair normally is not green, but this hair is. You kind of, lots of shadows on this. So you just see the highlights going through like that. And then you can come in with like a, like a knife or something. If I remember that I kept my pocket knife somewhere close. I did not. I'll just use like, um, let's see, I'll be right there in a second. Just, oh, I have a letter opener. So the letter opener that I've been using as a palette knife, if you just scratch it, like that, if you just scratch it, you can get pretty realistic hair. So yeah. Highlights are super, super important whenever you're doing hair or fur. Um, obviously, highlights are important in smooth surfaces too, but that's less, less of a big deal if there's less highlights, you know? 
And, uh, you had green hair once. Yes, I forget. Naturally. What I mean by that is naturally occurring green hair. That would have been actually pretty cool though, Matthew. I didn't know you dyed your hair green. All right. And since we were thinking about drawing an elephant at the very beginning, I'm not gonna do the whole elephant, but I'll let you guys kind of surprise me. Maybe actually, once you've finished this, like if you've done this, maybe like on the back of your paper, we can draw it there. But you guys can show me what you did. You just send it to my Instagram at Stephen Draws with a Z or a Z. It's Z in Canada and Britain. All right. Yeah. So we're going to move on to like bumpy, scaly skin. So again, I'm going to draw a square or just kind of like a, like you can see how it's curved. Kind of like that, kind of, it doesn't really matter. And uh, let's just, let's say the light is down here. We'll draw, oh, thank you very much, Sonic Phil. Um, great technique on the hair, keep it up, bud. Thank you very much. Hopefully, I can, um, I'm just sending, I'm going to be sending pictures out of my commissions that I did today to some of the people that I commissioned art for. Except you hands, no, I'm not completely done. Almost done though, I just have to color it. And um, yeah, all right. So for the scales, it's just, so if you look at an elephant's skin, it's like relatively bumpy it's not super smooth so maybe this can be his like the side of his body so you want to draw lines again except this time they can go all the way down and um kind of like a grid almost you can go across except you don't want the grid to be super even like this and then also, make it kind of rounded. So you see what I did? And um, light has been established here, so it's going to be darker up here. And I use little swirls. It's going to be the darkest up here. So the whole scale, like the whole bump, can be colored in. And I'm just going to go continue like that all the way through and so rounded little bumps this is close up by the way the, the side of your elephant is going to be like like this and then the grid's going to be like really small you're barely going to be able to see it but this is how you do like a bigger like even doing this kind of technique what i did i just did a bunch of like swoops down like this then you can connect some of them that looks like you would do pretty good fish scales with that, too. That's kind of what it looks like. And then you can erase. Yeah. All right. You have to know where the light is. Yes, that is true. If your light source is, like, up here for a section of the elephant, and then it's down there for another section of the elephant, it's not going to look very realistic. Or it will, but it'll look kind of like, where's that elephant? You know? <laughs> Why is it being lit up from... Why is his face glowing, but his other side of his face is not? Uh, you know what I mean. All right. So you just kind of continue, and you just very lightly shade in all of these areas. And wherever it would be darker, like at the creases of like his skin, like where the bump would be, put extra layers there and a little bit more pressure, like that. Then you can erase... Just the middle, and it kind of looks like that. And then if you get the whole thing done, and of course, this would be on like the elephant's leg, where it would be so scaly. On any other part of the elephant, you can actually use um, a reference, and if you use these techniques, of course, and it always helps. If you're using a reference for the elephant or for an elephant, 
like make sure you get a good sketch and what actually can help it helps with me when I took um adult painting class I was in like grade seven oh grade six I was in grade six uh we have like this weird chalk that you can put down like this all on the paper so like and if I turn the paper over and the paper gets like rubbed on that side, like normally with hard pressure, it leaves the chalk, it'll leave the chalk behind. I missed it completely. It'll leave the chalk behind on the other piece of paper and then you can get a very detailed, uh, yeah, sketch helps a lot. So since the light has been established here, it's gonna be kind of dark throughout the whole thing in here, but it's gonna be lighter by the bottom. And of course, all the scales are gonna be kind of, not all of them will be that big. So you can actually split some of the scales just down the middle with like a line, kind of like that. And I'm also gonna erase this because it's gonna throw me off my groove. I've, I'm sorry, that's an um, interesting phrase I normally don't say. Whatever, though. All right. So, and then, of course, it's going to be darkest on this set of scales, like that. Oh, thank you very much, Mark. Sending more supply money from Lisa. Thank you very much. Oh, and I completely, I keep forgetting, Mark, call your... You're Lisa. I keep calling you Mark. And then, like, after the live feed, my mom's like, you keep calling Lisa Mark. And then I'm like, whoops. Well, I mean, there's a kid in our class, in our old class, and I was calling them by the wrong name for the entire year. Uh, their name was uh, Randy with an I... And I was calling them like Isabel because I'm not, I don't know, but that's two very different names. So, I mean, cut me some slack here. I'm really bad at names. I have a video coming up soon. I'll be like announcing some information, which would be pretty useful, hopefully soon. Oh, and then I can get, yeah, I'm going to do some more highlights on the scales just so like I'm pushing it down and then coming off really quick you can actually hear you know you can see how fast the little strokes are then you can well for this it doesn't really matter because I'm not trying to show the this side anymore you guys already got the gist of it for the light side however you can't really see a lot of the cracks on it. Oh, and same for this, because it's going to be light down here, too. Kind of like that. You can't really see the cracks as well. And then as soon as you start getting up, you can start, like, establishing more bumps on the skin, but it's still very, very light. And since the light is coming this way, it's going to be the darkest... The darkest part of it all is going to be coming, like, on this side of the scales. And then you can do that all the way up. Now, I don't have a reference with me, so we may not actually get to drawing the elephant until another episode. However, if you do practice these skills, like these little tricks, techniques, these techniques that I use, it'll help very much. Then you can also, it doesn't really matter up here. I'm not really worried about there. But you can kind of see what I did. And of, of course, you don't want it to be gray. I just smudged it too much. So it's going to be dark and then light. Kind of like that. Yeah, an elephant standing by or like in front of a campfire or something like that. That would be a cool idea. Ooh, maybe we could do like a step-by-step -step kind of class. I can't do the whole thing now because I don't want to take up... Oh, never mind. It's only been 30 minutes. 
but I don't want to do the whole drawing now because I don't want to take up too much time. However, we will establish like a sketch. Now, most of my drawings are actually freehand, but you guys would probably want to get a reference. So if you have a picture of an elephant that you really like, screenshot it on your phone or whatever you're using right now, come back and then, um, or just on a different device. And then we can start working from there. So yeah, so that's just how you get kind of scales. And then of course, not all of them are gonna be that the exact same size, like they'll be separated like that. Kind of see what I mean, right? So that would be close. Oh, that's an elephant's trunk right here. And then of course, so if you, yeah, take this as an elephant's trunk, separate the scales with like a thicker line. And that's what I had in mind while I was doing this in the back of my mind. See how like it, it's wrinkled like that? Yeah, all right. So if you have these steps down, you guys can actually decide, again, what kind of animal you want to draw. Oh, and smooth skin's really easy. You just gotta, I'll do this one really quick because it's, it's simple. It won't be too hard. Establish the light source, so I'll make it up here. Shadows down here. It's light up here, and it's dark down there. And really, you just do like that. And smudge it with your finger. And of course, if you're using colors, it's a lot different. But you kind of see how I just smudged it in a bunch of circles, and it looks... And a bunch of little dots. Like, whoop, I'm actually going to use a smaller eraser. If you have one, you should use it because it helps. Like, it doesn't have to be electric. I'm not even going to use it as the electric eraser part. But you just do lots and lots of dots. Then you shade it in. The light part is just white on the paper. And the dark part is just dark. And, yeah. Shadow, highlight, uh, accommodate for curve in the skin. It's really easy. Yeah, all right, let's see. Oh, good night. Good night, Katharina. Did I say, yeah, yeah, I think I said your name right. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. All right, so yeah, smooth skin is really easy, and of course, if you want it to be darker, you just, I use little swirls. Then you smudge it to make it look smooth. Smudge it towards the light part, but not all the way there. And then if you want it to be completely smooth, just keep smudging it and then erasing it till you have it right. I'm gonna turn this over now. And we, we're just going to be doing the sketch. So if you guys have, like, also if you've decided what kind of animal you want to do now, uh, tell me, but if you want to do an elephant or like a maybe a fox or a dog. I'm gonna show you guys how I drew Chewy, except I drew him with colors and this is pencil. So it's, it's kind of different, it's probably easier. So what do you guys think? Is there a specific animal that you guys want me to do or are you gonna stick with the elephant? Let's see, a moose. Well, that's very Canadian. I might actually need a reference myself for that one. I don't have an iPad with me, but I could probably grab one. Let's see, what do you guys think? Chewy, a cat, moose? What do you guys think? What do you think we should do? Because if we do Chewy, all of these techniques will apply, but it won't be difficult because he's cute and he's small and he looks like a little rat. All right. Let's see. Oh, mouse, not moose. Okay. Yeah, the feathers are a bit difficult. Let's see. You know, there's a lot of different comments on here. I'm just going to show you guys how I drew Chewy, and then we can move on to that next time because I don't even have a reference. Oh, maybe I could do a giraffe. Okay, I'll show you guys how to draw a giraffe. You like Chewy? All right, what do you guys think? I'm going to move down to uh, Chewy or a giraffe. Those are the two options now. Uh, chewy or a giraffe? 
Would you like to... Chewie's pretty easy to draw. So is a giraffe, though. Uh, Chewy, Chewy, Chewy. Okay, I got more Chewy the thing. I got more Chewy votes than the gir giraffe. I don't know what I just said. All right, yeah, I got lots of Chewy votes. So I guess that's what we're going to draw. So if we start with his little round head. It's Chewy with an IE, but it works with a Y as well. We haven't really established that. We don't have a collar for him or anything. We just call him Chew. So start with a circle. Like that. Just a sec, actually, I'll be right back. I need an eraser, a bigger eraser. So if you guys have a larger eraser that you wanna actually use instead of the one that we're using right now, that would be perfect as well. And also I'm gonna put these papers away because I don't want them to get wrecked. Okay, just a second guys. I'll be right back, I swear. Yeah, all right. So you start with a circle like that. Easy, easy thing to start with. Yeah, chew. Like a choo-choo train, except he's loud and he barks a lot. And he doesn't go choo-choo, he goes bark-bark. Yeah, start with a circle, like this. I'm actually gonna put my drawing glove on. Obviously, not a lot of you guys will have one of these. That's okay. Not a lot of people use these except me and some other people, but yeah. Start with your circle. And then put another little circle on the inside like this. Which type of eraser is better? Hard rubber or soft rubber? So for this kind of drawing, uh, hard rubber is best if you want to erase hard lines, but soft rubber is way better if you want to erase lines like what I'm doing right now. Circle, little circle inside of it. Little snoot, little circle for his nose. And then draw like a little arrow pointing up towards the snoot. That's his mouth. He looks like a bear. That's going to change really soon. Now, now just kind of make his mouth come down like this. So downward towards, and it's going to connect with the circle here. And also this is flat on this side. So it's going to come down, connect here. And draw another uh, oval shape here. And erase the inside. Oh, let's see what Hans said. Looks like a teddy bear. Yeah, all right. I don't know. <laughs> it does look like a teddy bear. Not for long, though. I guess he kind of looks like a teddy bear, but yeah, you'll see. So if you take like a line down from his mouth and kind of connect it like this, and also his mouth comes down at more of a sharp arrow, so kind of like that. Now, if you just draw like a little rough, his hair is spiky on this side. So if you get his hair to look anything like that on the side, perfect. If you haven't, whatever, still perfect. If you erase this, because I kind of made it a little bit too high. Chewie's got a weird little mustache thing going on. Always has, probably always will have a little mustache thing going on. So just make like a bunch of rough squiggles to connect it like that. Of course, nobody's perfect, and I'm probably going to be correcting this a lot as we go. His nose, of course, that being one of the things I have to correct. Kind of like that. If you've ever drawn a dog nose, that's basically all you really need. It looks like a mushroom, and then you put two circles down. And then... Kind of connected like a little Lorax mouth or something. I don't know. He looks like a weird cartoon character almost. And actually, his mustache doesn't come down that far. So maybe we can make it go up a little bit. And then his, this part of his mouth comes down into his neck. And we don't want him to look like a Scotty dog because that's not necessarily what he is. So I'm going to put his... No, I know where his eye is. It's prox approximately like... 
I don't know, not super far away from his... Kind of like up here, does that look right? I just kind of put swirls everywhere until it looks correct. What I think Chewy looks like. Kind of like that. Also, his nose is bigger. Yeah, that looks like about the right spot. Also, just a little bit of a correction is... Again, his mouth does not come down super far. So maybe we can just erase, just, I'm going to erase it and make his mustache shorter like this. Same thing. His little mouth comes down like this. And of course, this is just a cartoon version of him <laughs> with a braided Viking beard. <laughs> that would, I mean, Chewie could probably do that with his little mustache right now. I'm not going to give him a braided Viking beard because I don't want to do that, but it's not a bad idea. Now, this, of course, we can reshape the shape of his head anytime we want, anytime we feel it's not what we want. This is just a cartoon version of him. I did a really realistic version if you haven't seen it on YouTube. It's like my eighth video, I think. Yeah, so... Then what we want to do, we want to come up from his snoot, his little nose. And it does actually stick out a bit. So maybe that was the problem. There we go. I've discovered why it wasn't looking so much like Chewy. It comes out like this. So, yeah, sorry guys. I didn't mean to, don't mean to confuse any of you. Right from the start. But, oh, almost fell off my chair. It's a good thing I didn't. That would not feel very nice. And then you kind of just... If you have his little mustache down, that's basically... It's good for you, because I don't... His mustache is lower. A little snoot. Got the snoot. And then it's, there's hair. A lot of hair that comes out here so if you just want to draw like temporary little squiggles there all the way like that also if you find a better spot for his eye that's probably a good idea I'm oh, sorry my friends texting me and he's probably texting me something really really weird because he says I dare you to watch this whole thing start to finish and it's I'm guessing it's a Rick roll which is um Rick Astley's uh, Never Gonna Give You Up. What's it called? I, is that the song name? I don't remember. It's just a, a weird game that we play. If you trick someone into watching that video, they got Rick rolled. And it's kind of like... Uh, it's kind of like a game that we play. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's definitely a Rick roll. All right, so kind of just get something like this. His eye is probably lower. Whatever, we'll figure it out. I'm actually just going to do the eye later. So can you guys. Eraser marks don't matter. And yeah. And then he also has like this weird part in the middle of his hair. So if you want to get that down. Looks like an M, like a McDonald's logo. And then hair, kind of like that. There we go. It's starting to look more like Chewy. I'm not, no, I keep messing up where the eyes. I did that exact thing while I was drawing the realistic Chewy. So when you have this down, I'm just going to do the, what, oh, let's see. I'm just going to do that. Oh, let's see. You guys are all amazing. Steven, you're awesome. Thank you very much, Hands. You guys are all super, super amazing. Thank you for being here. Sorry I didn't catch up on a lot of videos super recently, but... Yeah, all right, back to the drawing. Chewie's got a McDonald's M on... He's got the golden arches on his head, made of hair. He's a little goof. And this part of his nose, the hair 
is a different layer, so just kind of make like a little spike, like a little palm tree right in there. And also, this hair will come down in whatever pattern you think would look best, kind of like this. So this is, this is actually looking kind of like Chewie's weird little head already. No offense to Chewie, he can't understand English, so it's okay. And then for his ears, he's kind of... I'm just trying to debate where his eye on his head would be. Because he's got a pretty big eye. That looks kind of like where his eye would be. But I don't want to get it wrong. Because he's my own doggy. I'm going to take out the super realistic drawing that I did of him before. So I, it's right here. Ah, uh, really close. I have it in a little folder. Well, it's just an empty paper folder. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yep, McDonald's arches is right. See how that looks? He's got the McDonald's arches. He's got the... I like how his mustache hair came out. Yeah, I see where his eye is. Right underneath the arch of the McDonald's arch. No, that's a Scotty dog. I don't want a Scotty dog drawing. I want a Chewy drawing. So, eye is closer to his nose. There we go. And just a tiny bit lower. Trial and error. Is something I'm very used to. So just kind of do that. And his mustache is higher up. Of course, sorry guys if I'm making you a little bit annoyed. Yeah. There we go. And his mouth comes out. Kind of like that. He looks a little bit vicious right now, but we'll fix that. Because Chewie's the least vicious animal on this planet. He tries to be vicious, but he just can't be. All right, so... Uh, and for me, the sketch actually takes almost as long as the actual drawing. So if you want to move on to his ears, his head just comes out a bit more... His ears come up like this. That's one ear. Already done. Less of a curve. Trial and error. And he's got his weird ear hair sticking out. Like this. If you'll see quick strokes up. And I'm making a little point at the top. And his ear, his eye, further back. He's got a little baby face. A little baby, little baby man. There we go. And that actually looks like a good placement for his eye. Like that. And his neck just comes down. His head is further back. Neck is connected to here. Spazzy little rat. Rat man. Doggy. Alright. So that's basically your sketch. Yeah. And his hair does not just come down in the golden arches. All the, it just goes all the way out. Kind of like that. And his ear is a little bit further back. 
Maybe we should get a trial and error counter. Where I say trial and error. Yeah. This is, I, I'm drawing him with more fur than he normally has. But whatever. He's cute. Crazy dog. And then you just kind of outline the main things that you want to keep. Like his mustache. Is it perfect? No. No, it's not perfect. But it's a mustache. And Chewie has one of those. And then I'm just going to cut. Not like, yeah, yeah. Kind of like that. Hey, Matthew. Can't watch your video yet. I'm really hoping it's not something horribly inappropriate and like or a Rick roll, but or scary. <laughs> but you know, I'll watch it after this. Don't give it away, but because I don't want to get banned off of YouTube. All right. Yeah. So if you basically, this is kind of what you want. This is his little head. His little barky face. You just kind of outline it. Outline any of the little hairs that are going to come up. Oh, you're getting a cat? Hey, that's really cool. What are you going to name him? I think Dorito is a cool name for a cat. We found a cat at her at my old school that I used to go to, at junior high school, and um, we didn't know he was there because we used to eat outside, like on a hill, a little like ten minutes away, no five minutes away from the school, and this cat came and he ate all of like the Doritos of this little bag that I've been saving, and then we named him Dorito because he ate my Doritos. And I just color the nose in. Yeah, we called we named him Dorito because he ate my Doritos. And he was a very cute cat. He loved getting pet. I don't know where Dorito went, but apparently his name his actual name was like it was like uh Pecan or something. It was a nut. It was like an, a nut, like an actual nut they named their cat after. Cause I met the people who are neighbors with the owners of that cat. It's a guy cat. It had like a very feminine name. So I just, we, when, uh, whenever we could, we, <laughs> we trained the cat to respond to, yeah, we trained the cat to respond to Dorito instead of his actual name. So now their cat, for I don't know how much longer after that, would respond to Dorito instead of its actual name. So we spent like a good hour with that cat. Like, mm, actually, 40 minutes out of our day, each day at lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Named him Dorito. And then we can just add some more. And then, of course, highlights are very important. This is separate from the golden arches on Chewie's head. And it kind of comes out like that. Separate from Chewie's golden arch ahead. Trial and error. Trial and error. Trial and error. I did not count, but I probably said trial and error at least another, like, 20 times since I've... Did anyone actually count that or not? Nah? Oh, hi from Texas. Probably a lot warmer there than it is here. Ooh, sorry, my back. My back. Sometimes it cracks when I um when I lean backward, my back will crack, and that all rhymed. But it's true. I did it at school. Like I cracked my back, and a lot of people were really weirded out. I was like that old man from Up, where he like leans back, and his his like neck and everything is like. 
except in school. I think it's where I'm sitting down for too long. But that's why I'm standing up right now. I'm leaning over the desk. It's a lot more comfortable for me. Maybe I should, yeah, I have the option to turn this into a standing desk, but I don't. Because I still, like, my legs get tired because I draw for hours. Yeah, all right, so we kind of, you kind of get the gist of, like, how this is supposed to look. So we can actually start using, like, the techniques I used. Save, like, for his mustache... It's little spikes, big spikes though, long. And kind of like they're layered over top of each other. And the source of his little hairs is kind of like it's from the middle of his mouth. I don't know why that is. I think it's because it, that's where his actual mouth, or that's why the, the hairs just grow out that way. So if you kind of do this and then erase it, Kind of get what his little mouth hairs look like. And then on this side, it's a lot easier. It's the short hair thing that I taught you guys. And shade it in. I've established the light source over here. And his mouth, short hair, like that. And then, when you want to come over here, with some more pencil, pencil mark. Oh, actually, I'm going to do the nose. Nose comes down like this. And since the light source is over here, his nose will reflect a little bit of light. Here. Now, if you just have a smaller eraser, that works great, and his nostrils are obviously going to be darker than the rest of his nose. Kind of like that. I'm going to use my electric eraser, but you guys can just use a normal eraser. This is just faster for me. For his little highlights. And he's got tiny little dots on his nose. Because dog noses are bumpy. And then obviously, excuse me, it's dark, gonna be darker around where the highlights are. So like here, do some extra shading just where this little mouth will be. And then where the long, darkest hairs, darkest hairs are, you can Add some additional detail, like connect it to some more little hair spikes, whatever you want to call them. And shade it in there. And then just continuously little erase marks. I'm running out of eraser. I don't know if you guys are. I did a lot of erasing. Hopefully I don't run out super quick. But yeah, and then you can... For this part, it's easy, just quick strokes upward. And then, you know, follow where the hairs are going. And it's going to be darker on the spots where it's not actually that chunk of hair. And it's, since the light is back here, it's not going to be that dark, but you know. Shadows are more in front, is what I mean. So actually, it would make more sense if there was a lot more shadows in here. And then you can just smudge it with your finger, make it look more natural, add a little highlight. Then what you can do is, uh, I'm actually going to read the comments because it's been a while since I have. Let's see. You should ink Chewy's paw prints on there and auction it off. I'd have to get like um, 
Pet Safe Ink. But I was really thinking of doing that for the realistic drawing of him that I'm probably one of my favorite drawings that I've done. I was really thinking of doing it like that and then selling it, but I'm actually thinking about doing an auction on a live feed. And then you can just message me once you've, uh, you know, bid. Like you have probably like two minutes to bid and then we move on to the next thing. We can do a little art sale. That would be cool. I think it was Jakota that did that. It's a good idea, Jakota, if you're on. And is that too low? It's a little bit too low, so... Tiny bit higher up. Like that. Then I'm going to use my electric eraser, even though you guys probably don't have one. If you do, well, that's great. Draw like a little highlight, but you can also just do this with a normal, normal pencil eraser. It just takes a bit longer. His eye is also bigger. Well, sp <laughs> We call him Spazzy Chew. And if you ask where he is, like in the house, if you're like, hey, where's Chewy? He'll like come and expect a treat. Or if you say like, Chewy, where are you? I think it's cause like, I don't actually know. We haven't trained him to do that. He just does it. And for this part, some of the hairs actually stretch over his eye. So what you can do, is some little erasing on his eye like that. This is the kind of shade that the whole thing's gonna be. This shade here. I know it looks kind of weird now, but it'll look a lot better hopefully soon. And then for this part, just shade the bottom of it, just gray. Well, I mean, I don't know if there's any other color you could shade it with a pencil, but... Yeah. Weird fact that I just recently learned from the internet. <sighs> Apparently all pens used to be black, and then someone decided they are going to put blue ink in it, and then everyone just kind of went with it, even though it didn't really make sense at the time. That no one really cared. It doesn't make a difference if it's blue or black, so maybe it does, but you'd think having to get color in a pen instead of just putting black ink in it would be more of a hassle than just putting black ink in it. But maybe it's less. And then for the this part, oh, and then again, you're going to race in here. short hair technique except a bit lighter because that's where the light is let's see whoops I did not mean to do that let's see what you guys said it's very rainy yeah it's really rainy in Alberta Oops. undo sorry I didn't mean to hide your message I undid it though. I un unhid your message. I was trying to read the comments and then it said um apparently I I unintentionally did that. I'm pretty sure I I fixed it though. I undid it. And yeah, so just continue like this. Oh and for his eye gonna color it in darker. I'm drawing Chewie when he was uh, a lot hairier and a lot spazzier than he is now. Got his weird little <laughs> spazzy, uh, spazzy Chew. He's been a really good boy lately, though. He's just been super cuddly. Whenever it's rainy, he just likes to sit on the couch. And he likes to be pet. And he did not do that before. So I guess he's... Becoming less spazzy. 
Ugh. Except for my live feeds, apparently. He's not barking now because there's other people in the house and he doesn't think we, like, left him or something. Short hair technique on his ear. And remember, if you go back, the short hair technique that I'm talking about, especially on the ear, is going to be lighter at the top because the lights, the light would actually hit that more. Then you can add highlights. I'm not going to use the electric part of it, so I'm not holding you guys at a dis uh, disadvantage during the drawing. I've seen several, oops, and I continue to almost delete people's comments. If my, if my battery, my battery is not, it is no longer at 10%, so I can actually take this out. There we go. I've seen several artists at dog shows, Commission Inc., paintings, portraits, uh, show dogs for hundreds of dollars. Oh, that is a good idea. Maybe I could do that. Except I don't really charge hundreds of dollars. It, by the way, if you guys want a drawing, I do it for like... If you want like a super realistic drawing of your pet or something, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, $80 is my normal rate, depending on what I'm drawing. Right now I'm doing like apparently... Like they haven't really got back to me yet, but it's only been a day. Uh, they want me to do like four motorcycle jackets. And they want me to paint it which would be cool, or just leather jackets. I just uh, assume it's motorcycle jackets for a friend of mine. But yeah, I, can, I also do like, maybe, yeah, don't send clothes to me now during the, cause you know, pandemic and everything, but eventually when this whole thing's over, I'm gonna start doing clothes and stuff again too, because I do commission drawings for like sweaters, stuff like that. His neck actually comes back like this. I'm holding you guys at a disadvantage. I know. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah. And then his head actually does this. He's got a neck like that. There we go. He's looking very, very dapper. I don't know. He needs a top hat. Oh, maybe I'll give him one later. And for me, I, uh, yeah, all of my commissions, every drawing I have, by the way, if you'll look closely, I actually have a secret Chewy in there. I did this on all of my drawings. This is the only one I'm going to give away. You can't see it in the video, but if you zoom in on this guy's crown, right in the middle, a little Chewy. Chewy drawing for 80, oh, let's see. Let's see, how much for this Chewy drawing, $80? Like the one that I'm doing right now? Well, this one's pretty small and it's only pencil, but I will draw you a Chewy drawing for way more realistic if you want. But yeah, if you really want this one, I will be more than happy to sell it to you. I can just do a much more realistic one if you want for the same price. Or I can draw whatever you want. Right now, uh, you're, oh, let's see. It looks like a lot like Sunshine Zenobia's dog. Well, actually, if if you want, you can send me a picture of Sunshine. And after I'm done your original commission that I was doing before, I'd be more than happy to draw Sunshine for you. Or you could get a drawing of Chewy if you want. Completely up to you and Zenobia, though. Whatever you guys want. More than happy to do a commission for you guys. Because all of you guys are really awesome. Thank you for being here, by the way. This live feed's a bit longer than usual. And then for the hair, smudgy, smudgy. Get the dark parts in there. And there's probably, like, just a few following the same grain of the hair. I didn't do any scales this time because Chewie's not necessarily scaly that I'm aware of. Like, maybe he's a, secretly a dinosaur T-Rex or something. Not dinosaur T-Rex. Uh, T-Rexes are dinosaurs. And then you can just erase thin marks here. I'm, I'm using the electric eraser so it goes by faster. You guys, obviously, if I'm going too fast, you can just skip it back. And then when you get it done, you can skip back forward again. All right. And I'm going to read what you... Oh, 
Sunshine looks just like Chewie. Aw, is, uh... From now on, we'll all be looking for Chewie in your work. Yeah, I... Uh, I'm doing a painting. If you, uh, I had like 30 people on when I showed you, but now I have double that. So, yeah, this. I'm working on this. This is like an old Ford. I no, it's not a Ford. Yeah, and then it's like an outer space. It's gonna have like a weird, like not a weird, like a diner in the back. And it's an outer space. It's gonna be really cool. It's gonna look like super calming. The blue sleeve you have on, is that to uh, prevent smearing? Yes, it is, actually. It also works for digital art, too. That's what I wear this for. Super, super useful. I like the lighter highlight on Chewie's head. Yeah, actually, I need to do a little bit more. But if you just leave, like, if you just uh, erase, like, a lot at the top... Just thin lines, erase it like that. And also, you kind of do that, just layers and then smudge it, except at the back. Oh, you can't even see the layers that I did with your, the eraser. Light strokes with the eraser, that way it looks more realistic. All right. Color, just shade the whole thing in, smudge it. Short hair, kind of short hair technique, except to make it like bigger. Not the long hair technique, but. Then just erase little marks just at the edges. Kind of coming down, short strokes down. I don't need the electric eraser on. I just do it by habit. And this side, very similar long hair technique, though. Like a bunch of triangles. And on the edge of all the triangles, that's where the shadow goes. Or you could start with the shadow and then establish that the triangles will go where the shadow is. Well, no, they're not really triangles, but you know what I mean. Then you can get your eraser. I... By habit, always by habit. For this, I'm just gonna do this though. Just erase it a little bit around, make his ear smoother, and then look, you got a doggy ear. Also, I'm gonna smudge it just around the edge like that. And for the neck, short hair technique, except remember, it's lighter here. We've established that the light will be coming from this side, that's the sun. He's kind of facing away from it, but of course it's still going to be lighter there, so I'm just going to start by shading it just kind of randomly. Because it's darker here, lots of shading goes in here. Then it gets lighter and lighter, like that. Oops, Let's smudge it like that. And actually, what you can, act what you can do, I'm going to read this comment really quick. Uh... Have you been using alcohol to smudge the Prismacolor pencils? Yes, I have, actually. I just did that on a... I'm going to be putting up a video probably tomorrow. And I do that quite a lot in there, actually. And then you can just do for this. See how I'm just kind of pushing it down at, a, at an angle like that? Like I'm tapping it, except I'm ripping <laughs> like... Yeah, like that, smudge it some more. Add some detail, short hair technique, just on the parts where you think it would be important. We we're gonna do an elephant, but I don't have a really a reference. But I live with Chewy, so I figured that would be make more sense. And your drawing would not be complete without your own little thing, like, what's it called? Pizzazz. My little drawing thing that I do is I add a little crown when I'm done. Right at the end of the drawing. Like that. And there you go. There's the Chewy. 
I'm gonna do that. I just established a new line, just in case I erase too much. Yeah, there we go. There, now you can still see where the edge of his head is. Yeah, all right. Now, you know what he needs? A body. So, don't worry, it's not gonna be super complicated. It's just gonna consist of, he always has his paw up, so I'm gonna draw his paw up. His other paw straight down at the ground because he does this weird thing where he's like this and his two feet just come straight out like he's sitting like a human his <laughs> two his two legs and now he actually looks like a teddy bear I don't know why I made his foot curl up like that. Whatever. I have one paw down. One paw in the air. And now, you drew Chewie as a spazzy, loud, barky teddy bear. That rhymed and was unintentional, but it works. There. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'm just gonna erase this part, don't worry, but like, yeah. There you go, you got a chewy drawing. All pencil. Now, if you want to get more detailed, <laughs> just ignore that part. I just did that. Yeah, he does kind of look like a teddy bear. Uh, if you really want to get some, like, extra detail in here, I would suggest, like, charcoal or a black pencil. Black pencil crayons. Yeah. He does totally look like a teddy. I'm just going to erase this part when I'm done. I just thought it would be kind of funny to draw. There. But that's the drawing right here so yeah if you guys want to skip back use this in any other time that'd be cool and then you can get some extra practice if you want yeah baby chewy he's very barky thank you very much lisa all right so uh oh you would love the pencil drawing i can I can totally do a, a bigger one for you. Same amount of detail. Even more, because I only had, like, an entire hour to draw this. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Thank you guys all very much for being here. Thank you very much. Um, and until next time, bye.